low testosterone is a big deal, both for men and women. But today's story is for the guys. Unfortunately, low testosterone in modern men is an all too common and growing problem. Now, there are several things contributing to the shortages. Too much estrogen in the environment, fat cells doing a number on the testosterone that is present, transport problems, and too much iron. This is what I want to talk about today. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we consider how too much iron could be wrecking your manhood. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Now, low T shows up in the bedroom and the old age home. Today's story is more about the bedroom. But even if procreating is not high on your agenda, this story may still have some very important insights. It's estimated that one in six modern couples are infertile. That is, they can't get pregnant despite trying for a year. Numerous studies suggest sperm quality and quantity is on the decline. Now, when we think of testosterone, the thinking is usually focused on the nether regions. The testicles are the pinnacle of manhood. Both sperm and testosterone are made here. But the signals to make these mandy things don't start in the testes. They start in the brain, specifically in a little gland that is tucked away in a cavern just behind your nose the pituitary gland. He is Mr. Hormone, so to speak. He spits out a diverse array of hormones and neuropeptides. Most of these hormones are not household names, but OMG. They run biology. They carry brain signals to distant parts. You've got the thyroid stimulating hormone, which cues the thyroid to release thyroid hormones and effectively sets your basal metabolic rate. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, among other things, controls your stress response. Endorphins moderate your happiness, specifically in response to pain. Growth hormone, well, it helps you grow, literally, and once you're all grown up, keeps you going. This trio takes care of reproduction. In the context of being a man, Luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone move the testicles into action, while prolactin discreetly adds a bit of voila to the mix. At the end of the day, follicle stimulating hormone tells the Sertoli cells to get their groove on and to raise the next generation of sperm, whilst luteinizing hormone tells the Leydig cells to pump out testosterone. When things go awry with these guys, making babies goes out the window. Now, the official name for this problem is hypogonodotropic hypogonodism. It can be caused by iron toxicity. You see, among the many talents of Mr. Hormone is the ability to take up non-transferent bound iron. At this stage, exactly how the pituitary does this is not 100% established, but it does. And the gonadotropes, which are the cells responsible for making the reproductive hormones, seem especially talented, and this makes them vulnerable. We know this because in iron overload disorders, such as hemochromatosis and beta thalassemia, gonadotropes suffer. This constrains the production of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone and testosterone. It's especially devastating in people suffering from beta thalassemia because it happens at a very young age, often putting a stop to puberty. So what? Thankfully, you don't have one of these horrendous problems. Well, yes, but... 
the average Western male consumes 10 to 15 times more iron than is needed to replenish daily losses. Now, on paper at least, this is not a problem because keeping iron levels in check all depends on regulating iron absorption. And it's a tightly regulated system, which hmm, is subject to interference. Being insulin resistant is a notable impediment. So, could it be that ordinary dudes struggling to get pregnant could be running into something similar, just a milder version of iron overload? This is what a team of physicians helping out desperate to get pregnant couples in Toronto decided to take a closer look at. Now, they had no shortage of men seeking help. They sifted through the cases, excluding those with obvious problems. And in the end, they had 303 gents on their books. They quizzed these guys about their lifestyle and then took blood samples. All the reproductive hormones were measured. In addition to these, the participants' iron status was also checked. And when they crunched the numbers, they got a hit, supporting the idea that extra iron may be contributing to fertility problems. Now, to be fair, it's actually a two-way street. Testosterone impacts iron levels, and it's one of the problems associated with testosterone therapy. But that's a story for another day. What is relevant is research from the 1970s showing normal men, in inverted commas, begin accumulating iron in their pituitary glands in their 40s. And this trend continues as they age and testosterone levels tank. So, it's going to happen, but you don't want to speed it up. Be vigilant. One way to keep those iron levels in check is to rein in insulin and be very cautious of supplementing with iron. So this applies to the guys. What about the ladies? Well, iron overload disorders are also associated with female infertility, but the biology is different. Iron does impact body chemistry post-menopause. So what is good for the goose? is also good for the gander. Interested in learning more about how iron impacts body chemistry? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com to learn more. I recommend browsing both our iron and testosterone library pages. You'll find the link in the description below. If you need a more personal touch, join the Better Body Chemistry Accelerator or book a one-on-one -on -one health conversation. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Here's the journal article today's episode is based on. Know someone struggling with a low T? Share this video with them so they can slow the inevitable slide. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.